Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using the for each loop in JavaScript. Now, a for each loop is basically a special type of for loop that we can use with arrays in JavaScript to loop through the elements inside of those arrays. And so, normally, if we were just going to loop through the elements inside of an array, we could use a for loop. So down here, I just have this for loop. And you can see it basically just says for var i is equal to zero, i is less than friends.length, i plus plus. And then up here, I have this friends array, and it has three elements inside of it with just different names. And down here, I'm just writing out document.write, friends, and I'm passing in this i as the index. So over here on the website, you'll see I'm printing out all of the elements inside of this array. Here's the thing, though. Looping through the elements in an array is such a common task in JavaScript that there's actually a special function that we can use called for each. And basically what it'll allow us to do is loop through all the elements inside of an array really easy. So instead of having to write out this whole for loop, we can basically just write a for each loop and it'll make it a lot easier to loop through the elements in the array. So let's create a for each loop. The first thing we want to do is say friends. And I just want to say the name of the array that I want to loop through. And then I'm going to say dot for each. And this is actually a function that we can call. So I'm going to call it just like I would call a normal function with an open and closed parentheses. Now, inside of here, I want to put another function. And this is basically a function that's going to get called for every single element inside of the array. So let me say that again. For every single element in this friends array, we're going to call the function that I put inside of these parentheses. And I'm just going to create a function inside of here. So we can just say function. And I don't need to give this a name. I can just make an open and closed parentheses and an open and closed curly bracket. And so this function that we write in here and all the code that we put inside of these curly brackets is going to get executed for every single element in the array. So I'm just going to click enter here. And now we can write any code in here that we want to write for each element in the array. So I could just say like document .write, And basically, I can just print out like element. So now over here, and actually, let me put a break in here. So now over here on my web browser, when I run this program, you'll see it prints out element three times. So for every single element inside of this array, it's going to perform this function down here. So it's going to basically just print out element onto the screen. And so that's really cool, right? I can do something for every element in the array. But what if I want to access the element in the array that I'm currently looping through, right? If you're looping through the elements in the array, chances are you're going to want to do something with them, like print them out or modify them or you know do something else with them. And in order to get access to the individual element that we're currently looping through, I can actually pass a parameter into this function. So over here, I can say element. And then down here, I can actually print out the element inside of the array by accessing that parameter. So I have element up here. And this is basically going to pass into this function the current element that we're looping through. Then down here, we can access it. So I'm going to run this program. And now you'll see, instead of just printing out element, we're printing out the individual elements inside of the array. So I could really call this whatever I want. It doesn't have to be called element. You could name it something else. Um, but element's usually like a good name just because that's exactly what it is. It's the element inside of here. But if I wanted, for example, I'm looping through an array of friends. So it might be better for me to call this friend. And basically, what this is saying is for each friend inside of the friends array, I want to access the individual friend. So um, sometimes it's better to name these things like that. So that's the basics of a for each loop. And these can be really powerful. So over here, I have another little variable set up. And this is actually an array of objects. So if I expand this here, you'll see that we have this big array. And the first element in the array is an object. And the second element in the array is an object. And these are both books. So this is an array of books. You can see over here, we have this Harry Potter book. And the author is JK Rowling. And the pages are 300. 
And then we have Green Eggs and Ham, authors Dr. Seuss, and there's 25 pages. So I basically have an array of different books and I could use this for each function to easily loop through all those books. So we could say, instead of friends, books, and we could say for each book, I wanna do something. So I could actually print out like different attributes of the book. So I could say like book dot author and for each of the books, this is gonna print out the author of the book. So we get JK Rowling, we get Dr. Seuss. I could also print out like another attribute. So we could say like book dot title and actually we can put another break sign here. And so now I'll actually be printing out information for both of these books. So we have Harry Potter, the author is JK Rowling, Green Eggs and Ham, the author is Dr. Seuss. So, you know, basically these for each loops do exactly what a normal for loop would do, but they just make it a lot easier. Um, so I would definitely recommend using these whenever you're trying to loop through the elements in an array. It's a lot simpler and it's just a lot cleaner. So it's a lot easier to kind of visualize what's going on. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.